is a great opportunity to experience something wonderful. It's a once in a lifetime experience. This is the ultimate active learning event. On August 21st, we're going to be treated to a remarkable astronomical event. We are having a total solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017, and Columbia happens to be right in the path of totality. We are the eclipse capital of the East Coast. It's going to be unlike anything any of us have ever seen, and the Carolina community stands at the ready. It is a unique opportunity for USC to showcase its talents. This is definitely one of the best times to be a student of physics and astronomy. The last time that we had a 100% total solar eclipse in Colombia was back in 1778. But this particular eclipse, uh, the moon is situated perfectly between the sun and the earth. And as a result of that, the moon's shadow is going to fall on the earth. It's important to think about where we are in a cosmic sense. And events like the total solar eclipse are a reminder of that. So where are we? Well, we're at the Thomas Cooper Library at the University of South Carolina, on the planet Earth, orbiting around the sun. And how do we know all of that? It's thanks in part because of scientists whose works are housed right here. This is one of the largest collections of historical astronomy held by a state institution. And you can kind of see this whole scope of how people interpreted and represented the solar system. It's just fascinating to be part of that long history of science. The eclipse is going to affect the atmosphere, so it's a wonderful opportunity to do some science, see what changes can be induced by an eclipse, and get students involved in hands-on learning. So there's a few different ways we can collect information on what's happening. The first is with a LIDAR, which is um, pretty unique here at USC. It's a laser beam radar. Um, we also launch weather balloons. They go up and get us vertical profiles of what's happening in the atmosphere. The students are very, very excited. Having science come right to you like this is such a rare opportunity. Hope you ride your sunspotters. It's a very simple device um, where the, you line up the sun with this lens here. It bounces off a series of mirrors and displays an image on the paper on the inside of this triangle here. And on the day of the eclipse, the moon shadow will come across and obscure this lovely view. In my lifetime, I have never seen a total solar eclipse. And as a naturalist, I'm going to be looking really at the effects that it has on uh, plants and animals. What is it going to be like? During the period of totality, it will become completely dark. The temperature will actually drop a few degrees, and certain optical phenomena that normally aren't visible will become visible. It's gonna be unbelievable, and you don't wanna miss it. Day will turn into night. We will see bright stars and planets begin to appear in the sky. We will see the outer reaches of the sun, what's called the solar corona. So it's normally not bright enough to be picked up by the naked eye. It's only when the central part of the sun is totally blocked. In the 19th century, people would have eclipse parties, and they would attempt to sketch the solar corona. They would then take all of their sketches together and make a composite representation of what they had collectively seen. During the eclipse, there will be a phase uh, called the partial solar eclipse. This is about an hour and a half before totality, and then about an hour and a half after. And during that period, everyone will want to be wearing your total eclipse glasses. Don't be hating. There's a lot of really interesting phenomena that you can observe. These blockheads here are demonstrating our pinhole cameras. They have a hole on the back that's created through aluminum foil and tape. And then on the front of the box, which you can't see because they're looking at it, is a piece of paper that where the sun is actually projected onto that so that you can see safely the solar eclipse. You can also see this if you take out a colander from your kitchen and hold it out uh, on the day of the eclipse. You can also do this with a simple wicker hat. All of the intersections of the weave of the, the wicker hat will create a tiny little pinhole that can produce a beautiful speckled pattern on the ground. So I've worked as a photographer on five different continents, and now this amazing phenomenon is right, happening right here in our backyard. Take pictures of the experience, not the sky, is my recommendation. 20 years from now, you'll want to show others who you were with, where you were located. These types of photos don't take any special equipment, but these are the ones that are gonna be unique to you.
This is one of those things that we all experience in our own ways. Some people are gonna do that through scientific measurement. Some of us are gonna throw a watch party. I'm a photographer, of course, I take pictures of it. Find a comfortable place and do this in your own way. I'll be volunteering on campus, at uh, different eclipse stations, doing demonstrations. We will have talks by both myself and Dr. Rodney. We will also have uh, talks from some visiting astronomers from Florida, even people coming all the way from India. It brings out something that's unique to the university. Um, I think it brings out our community spirit that we can all come together and, and get excited about this event and get excited about teaching science and bringing science to the public. And you should get out and really experience this extraordinary event. Uh, make a party of it, invite your friends and family, and don't forget your eclipse glasses. Bring your eclipse glasses, your weather balloons, your LIDARs, your temperature sensors. Get out there and make science. We'll see you at the eclipse.